You're listening to Anatomy for Life with Crystal and Nicole, where we discuss the anatomy behind the most popular physical and spiritual practices so you can get the most out of these modalities on your healing journey. Welcome to our podcast today. I'm Crystal. And I'm Nicole. We're going to just take a minute to tune in to balance both hemispheres of our brain so we're completely present and all the inspiration and thoughts come up in this podcast for us and our listeners. So palms up is a nice receptive position wherever you are. Don't close your eyes if you're driving. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. On your next inhale, gently let your belly expand. Pull your belly back, exhale. Inhale, drop into your heart. Exhale, soften your jaw. Relax your shoulders. And blink open your eyes. And I want to um, talk about the two hemispheres of the brain and what they each contribute and what we know about them. Okay. And then talk about this concept in yoga where you're balancing the hemispheres of the brain and you're balancing the divine masculine and feminine what those attributes are okay and like then i'll expand energetically on this balance how can you hold this cognitive dissonance like how can you be in both at once and i was just trying to think about like what i know about like the, you know the operating and i re i have like i remember very specifically being in um I think seventh grade yeah and mm -hmm. my seventh grade communications class and the this is when i you know like this started to become a big thing at that it was around that time when people started talking about if you're left brain then then you're you more tend towards you know um logical thinking and you know i mean for the for better or worse right sometimes right. that was classified as something that was bad um and then right brain was you know you're more creative you know and um, a lot of a lot of it, like they've learned over time, that a lot of your handedness and these different things, you know, they, they felt like, well, that's directly related. But then there's this very small percentage; only ten percent of people are either ambidextrous or left-handed, right? And um, I'm both, so right, left-handed so, and ambidextrous. Yeah, so I'm left-handed, <laughs> but it's like the only thing I do left-handed. Oh. And I do everything else. And so um, they had these series of tests because what they were trying to accomplish in the schools and like with students at the time was, oh, let's try and, and like, um, let's try and like cater certain teaching like to people who, you know, if you learn in this way, then maybe you need this kind of environment. And at this time, teachers were like oh. covering their lights for darker state or whatever. And so they had us do these series of standardized tests to see if we were left brain or right brain. And I personally was the only one who went through three of those because on every one of them, I came up exactly in the middle. And I'm ambidextrous, so it makes sense almost, That's right? Fascinating. Yes, and so most people were getting that they were left brain, right? Most people are right-handed. That's the majority of the people. And then you had a couple people who made it past the first test because they came up too much in the middle. And then on the second test, it drilled down more. And then they were able to like kind of categorize them a little bit more based on that. But I went through three complete tests where I was in the direct middle on all of them. That's crazy. And if you know, and I know you know this, in the article that we shared and read, that that is a little bit unique to humans because when they do the same test in chimpanzees and parrots, parrots are the opposite. Mm -hmm. Most of the time they pick things up with their left claw and chimpanzees are more 50-50 or 65. And so it can vary. It's not that all mammalia are logically left brain. Right. Either. And so that's fascinating. The anatomy behind that is there actually are areas of the brain that they match. Like we've heard language comes from the logical left side of the brain because, you know, Dr. Broca discovered Broca's area, and then later another doctor discovered a specific area within that where the right. language is sequenced together. 
-hmm. And so we do know that's on the left side of the brain. We also know that things cross in the corpus callosum mm -hmm. um, and actually in small other areas of the brain to transfer information. And we also know that when there's injury in a specific area, the other half of the brain, which normally doesn't participate in that, can rewire, learn those behaviors. Yeah, and it's fascinating because I think um, it's always, it, for so long it's been, we look at everything in this lateral way with the brain where it's like, this is what the left side does and this is what the right side does. But as with like all things in our body, we it, yes, there might be certain parts in the brain that have more control over things like speech. You know, when you have a stroke, then certain you can't, you know, discern certain parts of speech or whatnot. But we also know that there is more inner working that sometimes other parts of the brain will start to compensate for something else that's happening. And likewise, if, if a part of your brain has been injured, then sometimes another part of the brain can't even find that function to compensate. Yeah, and the other thing I found fascinating was that even all the theories of originally when we were evolving, why that was, mm -hmm. and it did make sense um, the idea that if you had to move right quickly, then if all of those sensors were found in the left side of your brain, then that message would get to the right side of your body faster. And, mm -hmm. and so they say it maybe originated out of primal movements and things just because to get the message there quicker, which is fascinating. Yeah. Um, and one fact I wanted to share was that when you take these pictures of brains on meditation and you put the different frequencies in different colors, it's kind of like a Picasso painting when you look at the brain. And then as you start meditating, they'll say, this is the color frequency being picked up from the brain after five minutes. And you start to see the colors uh, differentiate a little bit. After 10 to 15 minutes, it's not where the colors are in the brain, it's that the brain suddenly looks symmetrical. So it's like a circle, like all the yellows in the middle and then a ring around is blue and then a ring around is red. Mm. And I've got a link to that on my YouTube and also you can post it in the comments below. But it's the fact that with the more meditation and integration, when they take these maps of the brain, they're even, they're symmetrical across both hemispheres. Yeah. When higher frequencies are being emitted. And that is fascinating to me. What's more fascinating, um, technically the anatomy behind it is, we should probably re reiterate that it's the right side of the brain that controls the left, right side mm -hmm. of the body and the left side controls the right and that crosses in your medulla oblongata and they are associated with specific thought patterns. So what I wanted to mention was our idea that a lot of us have heard about the divine masculine and the divine feminine, which in the yoga world take on the qualities of the right brain and left brain. Mm -hmm. And in the emotional code and in body things we do, we say the left side of your body is feminine, the right side is um, masculine qualities, which makes sense. So if your right brain is creative, then the left side of your body is the divine feminine, which we say is receiving um, creative, flowing, circular ideas and the right side of your body is divine masculine from your left logical brain which is linear thinking and linear ideas so where this idea also comes full circle i love is you know how we tune in at the beginning or meditate and there's one idea about the moment is the end all be all like live in the moment mindfulness all of these things we mm -hmm. hear because it brings so much peace it brings balance to the hemispheres of your body. So when we sit in mindfulness in the moment, we're connecting with the line that basically goes up and down. It's a circular idea. It's how we connect to spirit in heaven. And that's in the moment. Um, and that is creative and connective and balanced anatomically, even in your brain waves. But at the same time, if you take a left to right line that's logical and progressive and applies divine masculine energy or 
logical thinking or like what I'm trying to say is linear things which have a linear outcome. Okay. Right at the center is the meeting point. So something I was listening to on Aubrey Marcus this week where he was actually talking about symbolism of the cross, but this idea that where the left and right brain hemispheres meet and where both ideas meet of masculine and feminine right in the middle. And he said, when you're in the moment, everything is perfect. I am whole now. And if you apply the divine masculine or the linear logical type of thinking, and also I create and move forward and evolve hmm. and other ideas that apply stacking one thing on top of another. Yeah. But at the same time, also I am whole and one in the moment. And it reminds me of cognitive dissonance, which is actually a measurement of intelligence in a human being. If okay. you're capable of holding that in your brain. Uh -huh. So I want to reconnect those dots for you. So holding cognitive dissonance, a sign of intelligence, balance, right and left hemispheres in the brain. Being able to be in the moment and create is holding cognitive dissonance in meditation brain waves and coherence, balancing the left and right sides of your brain is an elevated state and vibration. And then also balancing the divine masculine and feminine, the masculine creating the container and the feminine being able to create within that container. Also brain coherence from left and right sides of the brain and body. So I think those ideas, there's something there in these ideas. There's like this common thread. Yes. What have you experienced or what, as far as like divine masculine and feminine ideas, have you always experienced the outside of your body? And I guess this question is for the viewers too. Or have you ever experienced it within your body? Like, has it been up until now that you always see that energy working like outside of you between a group of people or in a relationship? That person's one thing, you're the other. Or have you ever experienced it or thought of it as uh, a union within yourself? Wow, that is something I'm really going to, I think, have to ponder on. I'm not sure I've really thought about it on that level. I mean, I think we're always all trying to attain, like, a balance, a balance, a balance, right? Mm -hmm. And so, ideally, like, I think you want to experience both, right? Outward and inward. Yeah. What does that look like? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so what hard. like what's the traditional makeup when we feel when we think of like a traditional man versus woman relationship? And even if it's not gender associated, but like there's this energetic expectation yeah. between people, right? In and a it, relationship. It's the expectation, right? Yeah. And that's sometimes we're afraid to cross or to go outside of those expectations instead of just being and who we are and where our brain works. Yeah, and why is it that we transpose like 90 to 100% of one idea of an energy onto one person and then the equal and opposite onto the other, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. And I think um, like not putting our, ourselves or others in a box in that way too, you know, because that, going back to the story that I told at the beginning, the reason why it was fascinating to me is because I remember feeling out of place mm. um, inwardly because 90% of my peers wanted like, you know, to sit on the yoga ball to do things so that they could be more creative and they wanted to have the lights dimmed and all of these things. And I remember trying to put myself in those boxes mm. so that I could be like that instead of living in no, I actually want to sit in like this chair that is solid that I can, yeah. you know, and then, but then over here when I'm creating my music, I'm going to be more creative and do something different. My brain was, I felt like I was always kind of moving in and out of all these different things. And so what does that look like if we allow ourselves to be where we also fit the best for yeah. ourselves? And that brings up an interesting point because is inner balance between the hemispheres of your brain. Mm -hmm which we can say it doesn't even necessarily mean the new research is showing that 100% of these characteristics are in each side of your brain. Actually, there is a bigger mix. Yeah. And that's a little bit of an older way of thinking given the new research. So if you're in balance within yourself at any given moment, 
does that correlate with your outward behavior or preferences? And that's interesting that that's exactly what that test was trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like there was some correlation. Right. And then also my thought is when you're in that inner balance, is it that you're at the still point of the vertical and horizontal line at all times of your being? Or is it that you are oscillating between it, almost like an electron oscillates when it's magnetic between the poles? It seems like everything in the universe testifies to the fact that there is a flow or rhythm or oscillation of something. It's not a fixed point. Yeah. So I loved what you said about being like, well, I may move between wanting to be in a hard chair and figure this out logically and then feel like to balance that I need to go over to the creative corner and do artwork. <laughs> That's the yeah. perfect analogy. Yeah. So is it about being in that moment all the time or is it about moving around that moment? I, I think it's about moving around that moment. Mm -hmm. I think you can still be completely present and be in that moment knowing that we are ever-changing beings and that our perfect balance is not going to be what the perfect balance is to the person next to you. We all do have unique brains and different makeups. Um, and finding what that alignment looks like for us so that you can be in that moment, but also learn how to move through it in your own uniqueness. Love that. Last week, I was talking to one of my friends as we were experiencing this in our romantic relationships. And we were really complaining about the fact that you're expected to play a certain role and um, depending on who you are in the relationship and what mm -hmm. that looks like. But if you are balanced within yourself, within the right and left hemispheres of the brain and within these ideas of the two different energies, what if they were simply energies and then you could decide like a dance with your romantic partner, which energy to present foremost in a relationship, a discussion, an experience, a planning and experience. And then what if you could receive that energy and you had the choice which energies to kind of put forth and receive based on balancing what they were doing, right? Yeah. For instance, in the relationship with my husband, it causes a lot of pain and suffering to assume that we have to fit into a certain box, like you were saying earlier. Yeah. And so when we're in this space where he believes I need to act a certain way and I believe he just needs to pay all the bills and let me have fun, right? Or, mm -hmm. or I believe he needs to plan the vacations and I need to show up for a good time and the opposite is happening or whatnot. I think the concepts and ideas of this cause a lot of pain. And so the discussion with my friend had gone into what if we could just simply choose? We can choose the balance within ourselves. We are just learning and creating, learning about these energies and learning about how to float around that midpoint or sit in that midpoint for a minute and then undulate between extremes. And at the same time, we're playing that dance out with our romantic partner or like you and I in mm -hmm. our business partnership mm -hmm. or at, for anything in that matter. The more con inward control and coherence we have, I think the more ability we have to recognize that and play out that dance with just simply energies. And one thing I wanted to ask you about because of your really successful long-standing career in like what we would call the business sector, <laughs> I'm yeah. so curious to see what kind of energy you have experienced and, and see, and I'm sure we have all of our own opinions, working in that so like the way that's structured and the way that works what is the energy expectation there how the business world has just been predominantly driven with like a masculine or left brain energy in general right yeah yeah well and i think you know you know a lot of my stories because of our long-standing relationship but um I, man that was something i was not prepared for when i first entered the business world um, I went straight into tech which is something I never thought would be my uh, path <laughs> <laughs> from your test you could have done anything it sounds like <laughs> 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 but, but it was really um, you know this is 2003 and 
in a very male dominated industry at that time, especially it still is, but very much then I was the first female in my business out of a hundred men. Wow. And my, just my being, my very presence disrupted a lot of the men. Mm -hmm. They didn't know how to behave and how to act. There was, I could tell you a lot of funny stories that happened in the beginning, but even me where I, um, I almost had to find myself as well, because sometimes I felt like I had to behave a certain way to fit in. Like what, for example, I'm curious about an example. Yeah. I mean, they like, was just... it like meeting deadlines or the way emails are structured or like, what does that look like? Yeah, I um, I was very organized and very, um, you know, just, you know, a go-getter and I'm going to get these things done in a certain way, whereas men, a lot of times, there was a more of a masculine energy to say, like, oh, I fly by the seat of my pants on certain things and I had certain expectations for other things. I think as a woman, you're used to, like, being a planner and I can even give you an example of um, okay, there was no other women in the company and, and, uh, suddenly a secretary was hired and an, an executive assistant to the CEO. And she was very organized and structured as well. And it came to like, to, um, doing the, the Christmas party at, you know, like in December and all of a sudden, everybody, like the men who had previously had to help with those things, came to me and were like, so, okay, you're going to help do this. And I remember looking them dead in the face and saying, oh, okay, I'm, I'm over here doing sales and marketing. That was my role in the company. And they were putting that masculine energy on me like it was expected because I was the other female. Oh, that's fascinating. And, okay. and I and I looked him down the face and I said, wait, hold on, I'm confused. Why am I helping plan the Christmas party? And here's the thing, I love planning parties, you know me. <laughs> yes, you do. But that was not my role in the company. Right. And I was being put in a box that was, they thought was, that's what the feminine does. That's and so it bothered, it really bothered me, you know, and they looked at, and they, they had to actually stop themselves. I remember they were super, they were very embarrassed. Yeah. And they said, well, why, why am I in, like, and they just said, oh, well, don't you want to help Karina? And I said, actually, no, I don't. I have tons of deadlines and tons of things, but I'm, I'm also wanting you to answer, why are you asking me specifically? Is there something that like, you know, like, is there not somebody else who's in charge of the parties? And they just said, one of them said, well, I think we just thought because you're a female, mm. you would naturally do this. I love that he owned it. He did. And I said, no, actually, I, that's not something I'm interested in, but thanks for asking me. I love that. I also am still pondering a minute on the fact that is this an attribute of the divine feminine mm -hmm. that it is organized um, or is it chaotic or is it, you know, because if we go back to the anatomy of the right brain being creative, mm -hmm. it has some interesting elements in there. So if the right brain is creative, is it also organized? Because the left brain is the thing that puts things in a linear type mm -hmm. of understanding, right? One thing after another, but it's also aggressive Rajas energy. That's fascinating to me that the divine feminine can be, uh, it can be creative and chaotic, but in an organized way. Maybe it's about the thinking of the future the planning for the future. Maybe it's about the caretaking mm -hmm. that puts it in an organizational kind of realm because the thing in the speech area of the brain right. that organizes the language is a different area. That's not Broca's area. Right. Broca's area knows the language, but I think it's called Warnick's area. That is the thing that organizes mm -hmm. the language. And, and also we just have so much uh, new research saying that they cross both areas of the brain it's also fascinating that most people have a larger left side of the brain. So that always brings me back to the energies of the divine masculine and feminine. And, and have we always gotten them right? 
Have we always understood these energies as we've labeled them outside of ourselves or put them on genders? Have we always been entirely right? I think there's some there's some room there for wondering yeah. from the natural stereotypes and to going back and saying it, organization may in itself be a function of the left logical brain. So why was that assigned to the divine, divine feminine as if it piggybacked on creativity, mm -hmm. caring, making food, right? Like spiritual yeah. arts. That is the divine feminine, but then why was also the organizational component assigned to us as well? And I propose this. Could business be done in a more divine feminine way using that energy and would it be as successful? And could other things traditionally assigned as being this works in this way, mm -hmm. could that be ruled by a different energy and could it be as successful? Because I think we're seeing a lot of crossover right now. I do too, a lot of convergence. And I think it could be successful. And I think it's one thing that we're kind of playing this dance back and forth with our business we're creating and the things we're doing because at the same time, can we intuit into things? Can we trust? Can we feel? Can we align with the moon cycles even in our launches and our things? And could that be just as or even more successful? So I think it's, I think the evolution is amazing and I think it's going to bring us all to the next level and the next vibration. I think if we can balance these energies in different arenas, politics, business, I think the potential is much higher, don't you? Than yes. just strictly saying, this is how we govern. Yeah. Well, I think we can all vibrate at higher frequencies if we're like even just being open to doing things in a different way and maybe looking at things in a different way yeah. than what we previously did as we're all evolving and learning. You know, I mean, even now think about men and their masculinity versus, you know, what it was in the 60s, right? Right. So like as we're evolving and moving into different ways, yeah. I think it's going to be fascinating to I think see. It's, I think how... it's going to be better. It has to be better. I agree. And just anatomically, your your anatomy is in a higher vibration. Your neuro, neurological connections are working in more coherence. More messages are crossing the right and left hemisphere. Right and left hemisphere. When you're balanced, when you're using both in balance, and I think that's the key. That's the model for the outside world. We just look inward to our anatomy. Yeah. And that's the model. So if you're going at something with only your right brain and you're looking at that from an anatomical or vibrational standpoint through the maps and the mm -hmm. science, that's not the epitome. That's not the best way. That's not the highest outcome you're going to get. So I love that. And I do think these are some food for thoughts. And I really want to know what our viewers think. I want to know their experiences, what their ideas of the divine masculine and feminine are, and if they've encountered this in the workspace or in their personal relationships. And more importantly, do you want it that way? Or, or would you like to see it change and how? That's that. what fascinates me. I agree. I love this. And I love this subject because I think we could just talk about it for hours and hours. And like, because now as science is evolving and we are learning more and more, it's going to be interesting to see how some of those things lined up. Maybe even with what we like deep down have always felt and known. And now the capacity to like, go out and take that and make some of the changes. Yeah, and normalize it and, mm -hmm. and stand in it. Yeah, well, thanks for joining us today. Let me know your thoughts on that and where you've experienced it and where you would like to see it change. Yes, and we have a new Instagram. Um, you can still follow us at Crystal Zinn, Z-I-N-N, yoga. But we also have our Zinn Yoga page, which we're just getting started which is going to have some really exciting things coming that we cannot wait to share over the next two months. So stay tuned for that and follow because we're going to be giving out some amazing freebies, all sorts of things. I'm so excited for that. All of the tools and the things we've come up with to put out in the world that people have been asking for, for our mission of health and service and proliferation and the ease of the proliferation of some of this stuff. And we've been co-creating it with you guys. Um, we'll be on zinyoga.com and it will be on Zin Yoga Instagram. So yes, and we'll just I feel like we'll be able to just really serve everyone in yeah. that way and just hopefully put more light and love out into the world. So exciting. Thank yes. you. Thanks.